Does Dame Mustaine still practice black magic? Did you know about the injury that almost killed his career? And where did the name Megadeth actually come from? You are about to find out and more, so stay tuned. I'm sure you all know the story of how Megadeth formed. After Dave Mustaine was kicked out of Metallica for his reckless behavior, he vowed to take revenge by forming his own band that would be faster and heavier. Megadeth became known as one of the big four thrash metal bands that also included Metallica, Slayer and Anthrax. But where did the name Megadeth come from? On April 11, 1983, Dave Mustaine was fired from Metallica and sent packing with his guitar and amp on a bus back to Los Angeles. As he detailed in his book, Mustaine, a heavy metal memoir released in 2010, he recalled how he picked up a newspaper on the journey home that said, the arsenal of Megadeth can't be rid, no matter what the peace treaties come to. The name stuck with Mustaine, and at the time he was trying to think of a foreign name that combined the words fire and bomb. On the same bus journey home, he was also writing the lyrics for the first Megadeth song. While initially called the song Megadeth, he changed the title to Set the World Afire. When he got back to Los Angeles to form his new band, he decided on the name Fallen Angels, but that didn't quite have the apocalyptic impact Mustaine was hoping for. So one day, his band were sitting around coming up with ideas for names. The singer at the time, Laura Kane, just said, hey, why don't we just call the band Megadeth? After seeing Dave Mustaine write this as a song title. And so the name Megadeth was born. And I think you all agree, it definitely sounds better than Fallen Angels. Hey man, why don't we just call it Megadeth, man? Although heavy music has often been associated with the devil, Satanism and other dark arts, it may surprise you to learn that many metal musicians were brought up in strictly religious families. James Hetfield, for example, was raised as a Christian scientist, Marilyn Manson was raised as a Christian and had a Catholic father, and Dave Mustaine was also brought up to be a Jehovah's Witness. Mustaine's mother became a Jehovah's Witness when he was just seven years old, and Mustaine also said it ruined his life, which is why he started to practice black magic. And we have more on his experience with black magic later on in this episode. As if Dave Mustaine hadn't already had enough problems in his life, in 2002 he suffered an arm injury that almost ended his career and Megadeth. On January 7, 2002, while being treated for a relapse at La Hacienda Treatment Center in Hunt, Texas, Mustaine fell asleep on a chair, which you might say doesn't sound too dangerous. However, his left arm was resting over the hard edge of the chair, and when he woke up, his arm was completely numb. He had managed to completely cut off the circulation to his radial ulnar nerve, which uh, powers the forearm muscles that bend the tips uh, of the small and ring fingers, essentially crippling his guitar playing hand. He was told he'd be lucky to get even 80% of his mobility back in his hand. Obviously, Mustaine wouldn't stand for this. Mustaine would spend the next 13 months in physical therapy trying to regain his guitar playing ability. Luckily for him and Megadeth fans all over the world, he still shreds like a beast. For me, I never had anything that I needed to make up for myself. I was already starting from less than zero, so everything was just a blessing. And, and I look at this way that uh, we connect with our fans is that there's no socio-economic difference between us because I was homeless. I, I panhandled, you know, I've gone without meals and I know what it's like, I, I, I know what it's like and, and I would never put myself above our fans. For many years people have associated heavy metal with witchcraft, satanism and the occult. Black Sabbath, the originators of heavy metal, were known for having an interest in the occult and various dark arts. But how many metal bands have actually worshipped Satan? Well, the truth is, not that many, except for Megadeth. Dave Mustaine always resented being raised as a Jehovah's Witness. So in his teenage years, he started to practice witchcraft and even black magic. He even attributes his use of black magic to many bad things that happened in his life. 
He said that because he placed a black magic hex on someone when he was younger, it ruined his life and he's never been able to escape it. Which is why in his latter years, he became a born-again Christian to try to absolve him of his sins. Although Mustaine has never publicly said what the Black Magic Hex was, he did write a song about it with Megadeth called The Conjuring. He even refused to play the song live for many years as he was worried it might bring harm to others. So why not give it a listen and see if anything out of the ordinary happens? I'm sure you all know who Kerry King is. In 1983, Slayer released their debut record, Show No Mercy, on Metal Blade Records. And according to former Megadeth bassist David Ellison, the band were looking for a second guitar player to join Megadeth on stage for some of their first live shows. A mutual friend connected Carrie with Megadeth and after hearing King play, Ellison said they were all blown away and had to have him for their first live shows. As we all know, the partnership didn't last very long and Kerry King didn't even appear on any studio album by Megadeth. I think you all agree he did pretty well with Slayer though. Goals, tour till we drop. So far so good, so tour. Believe it or not, Megadeth actually have a mascot and his name is Vic Rattlehead. You'll see him on the cover of records such as Rust in Peace, Peace Sells, But Who's Buying, and So Far, So Good, So What. Dave Mustaine actually came up with the original drawing, and if you look carefully at Wick, he's not your average skeleton. His eyes are covered by a visor, his mouth is clamped shut, and his ears are closed with metal caps. Dave said this is to symbolize the phrase, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. According to Mustaine, the mascot represents his feelings about religious repression and freedom of expression. It's a shame Vic can't hear Megadeth's music with his ears closed though. On June 12, 1985, Megadeth released their debut studio record Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good, and it was nearly responsible for a killing spree. The opening track, Last Rides, Love to Death, was inspired by the Marvel comic book The Punisher, a dangerous vigilante searching for justice. During a radio show, a Megadeth fan called the station and requested the song to be played, saying, it's good music to go postal and kill a bunch of people too. The man was later arrested on the suspicion of commencing a potential shooting spree. Scary stuff. I don't know that metal, real credible metal, ever had mainstream dominance because that is what ultimately killed metal, was mainstream exposure, regardless if it was dominance or not. I think that's one of the things that has kept us relevant. We have not always, we've never tried to follow trends and it's what's kept us, I wouldn't say better or above anybody, but I think you know, having our own standards and not trying to fit in is what's made us have that longevity. If you watched our first episode on Slipknot, you'll know how much their first record cost them. So how much did the first Megadeth record cost? Yes, the one that's almost cost the killing spree. Killing is my business and business is good was recorded between December of 84 and January of 85 and is considered to be one of the foremost thrash records, helping to secure thrash as an authentic subgenre of heavy metal. The record was also Damon Stane's answer to being fired from Metallica, but how much did it cost? Well, the band were signed to Combat Records, and Megadeth were given an initial $8,000 to record the album, which wasn't a lot of money. However, the band spent half of it on alcohol and other various substances. The label then had to hand over another $4,000 for Megadeth to finish the record. It was recorded at Indigo Ranch Studios in Malibu, California. Considering Mustaine was fired for his alcohol addiction, it's no surprise the band spent most of that money getting loaded. We all know who the Sex Pistols are. The British punk movement had a huge impact on many American bands such as Metallica, Slayer and of course Megadeth. On Megadeth's 1988 record, So Far So Good So What? The band recorded the cover of Anarchy in the UK, and they had someone very special join them in the studio. Sex Pistols guitarist Steve Jones actually recorded the guitar parts for the cover that ended up on Megadeth's album. A pretty cool combination, one of the original punks and one of the original thrash metalers. 
And last but not least, it may surprise you to learn that Dave Mustaine is proficient in martial arts. He also black belt in Taekwondo and Karate. In 2021, he also started practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So not only is he a riff wizard, he can probably kick your ass in a marsh pit as well. If you want an even more detailed history of the band, you can order a copy of Mustaine, a heavy metal memoir, using the link in the description below. Check out our other top 10 fact videos or dive deep into one of our documentaries. You've been watching Brom Music TV and I've been your host, Mariel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.